They're weird, fuzzy, and in a lot of trouble. These insects are actually all bees, wild ones. And they're debatably more important than the honey-making kind. People are really worried about bees. We will take the plight of the honeybee for granted at our own peril. But what most people don't know, honeybee numbers are increasing worldwide. Not just that, but the way humans use honeybees makes them a problem. Putting a honeybee hive in your backyard doesn't help. Because we're saving the wrong bees. Animals are involved in the pollination of 90% of the world's flowering plants. And when you think of pollinators, the honeybee probably comes to mind. That's because honeybees and humans have an ancient relationship. Bees have been managed for thousands of years. There's a lot of evidence that it has played an important role also in the ancient cultures in Egypt and, and Greece. And so bee beekeeping has always been very widespread. Axel is the chair of the Invertebrate Conservation Committee at the IUCN. Honeybees are native to Asia, Europe, and Africa, but nowadays are everywhere except Antarctica. Apis mellifera is the most common honeybee and the best studied, although there are another 10 known species. They're general pollinators, meaning they will pollinate most plants. And although honeybees are at risk from pests and disease, the number of colonies worldwide is actually growing. According to the FAO, managed hives have increased worldwide by 83% since 1961. Because they are always managed by the beekeepers and, and also receive veterinary treatment and so on, there's no, no risk that they will become extinct. But honeybees aren't the only bees. The general public confounds bees with the honeybee. This is Isabel, a pollination ecology researcher specializing in urban environments. It would be the same situation if, for example, you were talking about birds and people think that when you talk about birds, you talk about chicken. There are around 20,000 different species of wild bees, and they are the most important wild pollinators. They're mostly solitary, and unlike honeybees, are suited to specific plants, which makes them much better at pollinating. A hectare of apples, for example, would require tens of thousands of honeybees to pollinate, but only hundreds of this wild bee because Osmia cornuta is particularly good at apple pollination. Each flowering plant um, is strongly connected to a pollinator that fits accordingly to the lock and key principle. An entomologist by training, Sabrina is a project manager at the Research Institute of Organic Agriculture. This perfect fit between flower and its selected pollinator is the product of a ongoing co-evolution on for centuries um, that is still operating. Like the squash bees native to Central and South America. They're perfectly suited to squash plants. Their early risers and squash flowers are only open early in the morning, while the honeybees are still asleep. Don't like squash? How about tomatoes, potatoes, or eggplant? These crops also need wild pollinators, loud ones like bumblebees to be precise. Their flowers require a vibrating buzz to release their pollen, something a bumblebee perfectly provides. Honeybees just don't have that skill. But wild bees are in serious decline. And this doesn't only affect them and their ecosystems, but our food security as well. Worldwide, wild bee diversity has been decreasing each year since the 1990s, Pesticides, intensive agriculture, and especially habitat loss are main drivers. A recent study found that we may have already lost a quarter of wild bee species, but assessment is hard due to the lack of global data. Various regional estimates suggest over 40% of wild bee and butterfly species are threatened. Farmers are already noticing a difference. When they walked along a, a field, everything was full of pollinators. And nowadays, it's, it's more like um, everything is calmed down and um, nobody knows where they are. This loss of diversity can cause knock-on effects on whole ecosystems. Less pollinator diversity means fewer wild plants. This can hurt animals that use them for food or shelter. And it's also bad for the future of our food. The yield of cultivated plants is higher when they are visited by variety 
of uh, pollinators compared to when they are visited by only honeybees. Remember Osmia Cornuta, the apple specialist? Most of the pollination of apple trees is performed by several species of wild bees. So if you don't get these wild bees, you would get a crop of apples that would be reduced. U.S. crops are already producing less due to wild pollinator decline. And globally, we're planting more and more of the crops that require animal pollination, like fruits, vegetables, and oil seeds. The increase in honeybees hasn't kept up. This means pollinator dependence has increased around 70% since 1961. And combined with the decline in wild pollinators, means an emergency for the global food supply. This is especially true in countries with many large monocultures that destroy wild pollinator habitats, like China and the United States. Not only that, the way we use honeybees actually makes them a part of the problem. According to the American Beekeeping Federation, two-thirds of the 2.7 million honeybee colonies in the U.S. are used for pollination. Most go to the almond fields in California, where 80% of the world's almonds come from. Then bees rotate around the country to pollinate other crops. Nowhere else in the world uses honeybees for pollination like the U.S., but the trend is growing in Europe too as wild pollinators disappear. Unfortunately, it's not so good for the honeybees. They can be exposed to pesticides from the crops or catch diseases from the other colonies. And these honeybees are also a threat to wild ones. Within a, a honeybee hive, you have tens of thousands of individuals that need a lot, a lot, a lot of food. They will eat most of the floral resources and there will not be enough left for the other pollinating species. If you have many, many bees, then they will probably outcompete this native species very, very fast. Honeybees can also spread disease to wild bees. An infected bee can leave some virus on a flower to be picked up by the next wild bee that visits. It's not the honeybee's fault, but save the bees definitely does not mean adding more into the environment. There have been a lot of people that thought that they could only save the bees when having their own um, beehive in, in the backyard. And that's the wrong way to, to conserve pollinators. So what's the right way? Industrial agriculture is the biggest threat to all bees. It uses harmful chemicals and relies on huge fields of one crop. Ideally, we change our whole food system. But on a personal level, supporting small-scale sustainable farmers, if viable, also supports diverse habitats for wild bees. Even more can be done with a backyard, like leaving native plants alone or planting new ones. Open, sunny ground or dead logs also make great breeding spots for wild bees. But most of all, they need more attention. We need honeybees but aren't in danger of losing them. With wild bees, it's another story. Did you have any idea wild bees were that cool? I am in love with Osmia cornuta. That apple bee, it's so 